The circular pattern feature allows you to replicate geometry in a circular pattern. The copies of the geometry is called the instances, which is based on the original geometry, which is referred to as the seed. The circular pattern features many of the same options that are available in the linear pattern feature. For more detail on some of these options, please refer to the previous lesson on linear patterns. In this lesson, you'll see a demonstration of how the circular pattern works, as well as some of the options available. Also, you'll learn how to create a circular pattern when the geometry doesn't already have an existing circular reference. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and like the video, and let's begin the lesson. The circular pattern tool creates instances of geometry spaced around an axis. Using this part, I'll show you how to create a circular pattern of this whole cutout. In the description of this video, you'll find links to the exercise files if you wish to use them. They are created in SOLIDWORKS 2019, so you'll need 2019 or newer to be able to use the files. To start the circular pattern tool, you can either go to the insert menu, and then pattern mirror, and then circular pattern, or on the features tab of the command manager, where the linear pattern icon is, there's a little arrow underneath that. So you can click on the arrow to expand it and you'll see circular pattern there. So click on the circular pattern to start the command. Once the tool is activated, you'll see all the options available in the property manager on the side. We will go over some of these parameters, but first let's select the geometry to pattern. By doing this, we're able to see a preview of the pattern in the graphics area, and therefore it makes it a little easier to change the parameters for the pattern. So if you scroll down the options, you should see features and faces. And just like the linear pattern, you can select either features, faces, or bodies. Because our whole cutout is made by a singular extrusion and a fillet, we can select the features, making sure that selection box is selected. And then if not already, expand your design tree, find the circular cut and the fillet for it. You can also make selections for features in the graphics window, but I find it is easier to select them from the design tree most of the time. With the C geometry selected, let's go back up to the top of the property manager to the direction one group box. And this is where we can select our axis and set our parameters. So in the first field, this is where you select the axis and you can either select model edges or cylindrical faces or axes or lines. There's a bunch of things you can select as the axis. So play around, see what you can select to do that. Uh, but in this case, we are just going to select the cylindrical face of this centerpiece, and that will act as our axis. And you can now see that a preview of the pattern is displayed in the graphics area once we select the axis. You can reverse the direction of the pattern by either clicking on the reverse direction button, or you can also click on the arrow in the graphics window as well. Depending on the parameters for the pattern itself, you're going to get different results when you uh, reverse the direction. For instance, if I change the degrees to say 180, so it's doing a half revolution and there are only th three instances, you can see now that if I reverse the direction, it's going to go the other way. Whereas when it is 360 degrees and four instances, obviously the reverse direction is always going to have the same effect due to the, the way the pattern is actually being created. So continuing on, the next field is going to be where you set your angle. Uh, this is either going to be 360 for a full revolution or anything in between. So for instance, 90 degrees or 180 degrees or anything in between. The next parameter is the number of instances to pattern. So this is actually how many of the C geometry you want to pattern through. Be aware that you can only see three copies of that C geometry, and that is because the instances include the C geometry as well as the instances. So you're seeing the seed plus three copies, which makes four instances. Notice that right now it is set to equal spacing and it is 360 degrees with four instances. So this means that all the pattern instances are equally spaced throughout that 360 degree revolution. If we change this to 90 degrees, you can see how that pattern changes. It is now spacing four instances equally through that 90 degrees. If we instead change that to instance spacing, the angle field now represents the angle between each instance, and this can also be adjusted. So here we have four instances and 15 degrees. So if we were to change that to 90 degrees, you can see it's very similar to the first equal spacing 364 instances. But in this case, it's making each instance 90 degree, and then there's four instances of that. So that is what instance spacing does. 
In the graphics window, you should also see this call out box. You can make changes to the parameters in this box as well, as well as also changing them in the property manager on the side. So how you want to adjust those parameters either through the call out box or through the property manager is your choice in the end. One thing to mention here is if I change this to six, one more thing before we move on, you'll notice that if I change the number of instances to six, you'll see that the preview hasn't actually changed. This is all related to the parameters you're setting. So in the case where we're saying every 90 degrees there's an instance and we have four instances, obviously that's going to be a full circle. So you have something like this. And as you increase it to five or six, every time it does 90 degrees, it's just adding another instance. And so what you're getting here is an overlap. We don't see them because once they overlap, overlap, they just become one instance, but you are actually seeing six instances here. So if I keep going up and say eight, nine, 10, 11, obviously due to those parameters of 90 degrees, you're not going to see any change. To finish our pattern, let's go back to equal spacing and we will make sure it is set to 360 degrees and the number of instances will be set to six. Click the OK to accept the circular pattern. If you ever want to adjust or change a circular pattern, it's just the same as any other feature. All you need to do is click on the feature in the design tree, go to edit feature, and there you can adjust, make changes to it, and then accept again. While we're here though, let's have a look at a few additional options. Towards the bottom of the property manager, you'll see instances to skip. If you click on that and expand it, you'll notice the pink dots appear for the pattern. And this is very much the same as the previous lesson of linear patterns. When you click on one of the dots, it's going to hide that instance. And to restore that instance, you just click on the dot again. So this way you can skip instances and create custom patterns. Also like linear patterns, there is the option at the very bottom of the property manager, which is instances to vary. I recommend watching the previous lesson about linear patterns as it goes into more detail about both the instances to skip and the instances to vary. But just be aware that these options exist also for the circular patterns. Moving on to the next model, I want to show you one more demonstration. With this part, I want to create a circular pattern of these two hole cutouts around the center of the part. But because this part doesn't already contain geometry that has a circular reference, we need to create an axis point in the middle to use as our axis of rotation. To create an axis, go to the Features tab in the Command Manager, and under the Reference Geometry icon there is an arrow. Click on the arrow to expand it and go to Axis. The Property Manager should appear on the side. Select the top face of the part, and then expand your design tree and select the origin point. You should see a preview of the axis going straight through the middle of the part. If you do, click OK. So you should now have an axis right through the central part of the model. So this axis will be suitable for our circular pattern. There are many ways you can create an axis, which I won't cover in detail in this lesson. The important thing for this lesson is that you know an access point can be created in situations like this where we need one for a circular pattern. So let's now start the circular pattern by dropping it down, going to circular pattern. And first we will select our geometry, which is the hole cutouts. And then we can go up, activate our axis selection. And you can either click in the graphics window or you can select on the design tree as well. Make sure equal spacing is selected. The degrees will be set to 360 for a full rotation and we'll change the number of instances to eight. It's also worth quickly noting that if you add too many instances, you will start to get cut out where they overlap and cut each other out. So always look at the preview and check for anything like that. But in this exercise, we just need eight instances. Click OK. Control 7 to go back to isometric view, and our pattern is now completed. So that is how you can create a circular pattern even when there isn't any existing geometry to use as an, an axis of rotation for that circular pattern. Finally, to clean this up, you can click on the axis we created and just go to hide, and that way we don't need it anymore so it can just be hidden. If you need to bring that back, you can just click on it and go to show. But in this case, we're finished. We can just hide it. So that brings us to the end of the lesson on circular patterns. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, like the video, and let's move on to the next lesson.